Hello Super User. So in the last lesson, we created this really cool set of macros for working with transposition. So in this lesson, we're going to continue this thread of working with intervals to create a macro that creates string harmonics. Now don't worry if you don't normally use string harmonics, because even if you don't, this macro will teach you a lot about really good practices of using Keyboard Maestro with Finale. But not only that, there's going to be some really good ideas in this lesson that you can take and apply to any macro you wish to create in the future. But first, it seems like, at least to me, it would make sense to include this string harmonics macro inside the same folder as the intervals we were just creating. Because after all, creating string harmonics is very similar to using intervals. They're all based off of intervals. But there's kind of a problem because right now this macro group and this palette is fairly full. There's already a lot of macros here and a lot of keyboard circuits being taken up. And this can be a bit of a problem, especially if we want to add new macros to this intervals macro group. But here's a question. Remember how we were able to close a macro group here? Well, doesn't it then make sense that we can also open up a macro group within a macro? Well, the answer is actually yes. And so we can actually create nested palettes where one leads to the next and not only will this make things more organized because we can have very specific palettes to the types of functions you're doing but it also means we can have virtually as many palettes we want and as many macros as we want and keeping all the shortcuts simple and easy to use and learn so let's get started so first what we're going to do before we create the string harmonics macro is we're going to move all of these transposition macros into their own macro group and then just use this one original one called transposition to call the macro group called transposition. So let's create a new macro group and palette and we're going to call this finale transposition like that. Available in all applications make sure it's specifically just in finale. Always activated we want this to be show a palette for one action one. It can be pretty much anything as long as it's not activated by default. And for hockey trigger, make any ugly hockey you want up like that. We're never going to use this. We just want to make sure that you don't accidentally use it or all the macros in here aren't accidentally activated. And so then back in the intervals macro group, we can copy all of these, put it into the transposition, and the only one we don't want here is this normal transposition macro. And then once we do that, we want to go back up to the intervals palette and go over here to the transposition. And yes, we want it to do these things, but we also want it to open up the macro group that we just created for transposition. So to do that, we're just going to add a new action and we're going to go to macro group and there should be one saying show macro group. Show palette for transposition. And then the last thing we want to do over here is delete all these other macros that we don't need and we just copied like that. And so now when we go into the finale and we go control W, control C, it should open up both the macro group and the transposition. And just a couple fixes to get rid of these little bugs. In the intervals, we already set it to show and hide the palette one, but we can change that back to one action. That way it disappears. And then for the cancel and okay, we wanted to hide the new palette that we just created. So back over here under transposition, under close, instead of intervals, we wanted to hide transposition. And same thing with enter. Instead of hiding the intervals, we wanted to hide the transposition. So cool, let's go back and just test to make sure everything works how we want it to. Control W opens up the intervals and then C opens up the transposition. And if we were to close it, it closes them both. And there we go. It works exactly as you would expect. So now we can finally get back into creating the string harmonics macro. So back over here, we're actually going to create a new palette for it. And we're going to call this finale harmonics like this available in all applications. Change that to available in finale, always activated. We're going to show up for one action when hockey trigger and just remember do something complicated over here that you're never going to press. And then to get to this palette back in intervals, we're going to create a new macro and we're going to call this harmonics trigger. I use the trigger V. You can do pretty much whatever you want. That's just what I use. New action, 
show macro group and we want to show the palette we just created called harmonics just like that and so now that we have everything set up we can create the harmonics macro so the one we're going to do right now is let's say we have a note that's up here okay we want to create the harmonic at a fourth so it's going to do a couple steps first it's going to bring the note down two octaves then it's going to transpose it up a perfect fourth preserving the original notes like that and then finally it's going to use the TG tools easy harmonics just to create the harmonics at the fourth so that's the manual process and so now let's recreate that in keyboard maestro so back here create a new harmonic we're gonna call this fourths and for the new trigger we're going to use s that's just what I use and now let's create the entire macro so the first thing we need to make sure we're in the selection tool so we're going to come up here to menu item menu item finale tools selection tool down here and that will allow us to use the keystroke 8 to move it down two octaves. So we're going to do 8 and we can just duplicate this command D to duplicate. Then we want to go ahead and use the transpose we already created. So we're going to come up here and again go back to menu item. And we're going to open up transpose, so finale, utilities, transpose. And so that'll move it down two octaves and open up the transposition dialog box. We want to make sure it is set on chromatics. So for button, we're going to press a button chromatically. This might look familiar from before. We're going to also press a button up because we want it to move it up a fourth. And then we want it to basically select a perfect fourth. Now we already wrote that macro, so we can actually run a macro. So execute a macro here find the macro you want. In our case, it is going to be under transposition and then perfect fourth. So it's going to do everything like we just did and we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to copy it again. And so now just for reference, we should be here, perfect fourth, up chromatically, and we just want to make sure that it's the check preserved original notes is checked. If it's not checked, we want to check it. Now that will require some logic so we can actually create an if statement. An if and we're going to do button condition down here. So if the button with the name preserve original notes is, is off, then we want to press the button to turn it on. We can actually put it in the then block and we can only press the button if it's already not on. And once we do that, we want to type another keystroke in. And this keystroke is just going to be enter to close it. And we want it to do it whether or not the button is pressed, so we're going to put it afterwards. And you can collapse these if you wish, like that. Now if we were to run that, just that way you can get an idea of where we are in the process. Control W to open up the intervals palette, V for harmonics, and S for a fourth. So as you can see, it moved it down two octaves and added a perfect fourth above. So if I were to undo that again, one more time, that's what happened. Now I notice that this is still up. That is just a quick fix is we can go back here to the intervals, harmonics, and instead of show palette, we want to show palette for one action. Come back here to fourths, where you can finally finish going over here to plugins, TG tools, easy harmonics, selecting force, apply, close. That's the process over here under find menu item. If I could spell it correctly, select a show menu item, menu finale, that's the application, plugins, and then TG tools, easy harmonics. Make sure the button of a fourth is pressed. So we want to do a button press and we want it to do fourths. I believe that's exactly what it's called. Let me just double check. If it's called fourths, then just we want to hit apply and then close. So we could duplicate this twice. Command D to duplicate. Apply and close. And so now let's see the entire thing in action. So remember control W 
to get the, the intervals, B for harmonics, S for fourths. And there you go. You have harmonics at the fourth. And again, just to recap what's going on, first we want to make sure the selection tool is selected. Eight moves things down an octave, so we want to move it down two octaves. Use the transpose tool and open it up. Make sure chromatically is set, make sure you're going up. And then just execute the same macro we did to create the perfect fourth. Preserve the original notes and only select the button if it's already turned off. Return the submit the transposition dialog box. Easy harmonics for the TG Tools harmonics tool. Make sure the button fourths is pressed, hit apply, and hit close. And as you can see, that saves you a lot of time. So in real speed, this is what it looks like. That's really fast versus if you were to do it by hand, you'd have to go over here, down, down, and then right click transpose. These are all the settings that already happened. And then over here to plugins, TG Tools, Easy Harmonics, Force, Apply, Close. So as you can see, Keyboard Maestro is really, really powerful and you can speed things up a lot, especially once you combine the use of palettes as well as very simple hotkeys in Finale. Now I know we went over a lot in this video and we went over a lot in this module in general. So in the next lesson, we're just gonna do a very quick recap to reorient ourselves to remember what we learned and what we're gonna expect going forward in the rest of this course. I can't wait to get started and I will see you in the next lesson.